Good afternoon, everybody. PC Outcast here, back with more of Ambition, and it's time to go meet up with our good friend Alex. See if we can uh, go a little bit further along in our relationship with him. Um, do we have a thing, an actual thing here? No. Do I just wait? How do I meet with him? Researching Marmond. That's that place. I don't actually have the. I don't have any of the places uh, where I can rendezvous. That's weird. Hmm. That's really strange. So how do I... Awaiting a response. Oh! I invited him and he hasn't responded. Okay. Maybe I should, uh... I should have given him more time. Okay. That's good to know. Let's go do... Go do this one. Alex and Onrod. Or Alex or Anurad. It's another day of sweltering heat, so you decide to spend the day exploring the area around the docks. If nothing else, it's an excuse to catch the cool breeze coming off the water, and the smell today isn't particularly off-putting. Evet, is that you? Alex asks as he approaches you, judging from the sweat on his brow, he appears to have had the same idea as, as yourself. The two of you walk and talk together as you walk along the river. He's just finished up his daily patrol and regales you with the story of their unit being accosted by an elderly elderly man claiming to be Julius Caesar. Hmm. The man was clearly mad, but there's also nothing illegal about wandering around in the street wrapped up in a bedsheet claiming to be the Emperor of Rome. He was just following us around, getting in the way and trying to issue imperial decrees. <laughs> okay. Surely you- oh, surely you just... He thought he was Julius Caesar? Like, really? As in the Emperor of Ancient Rome? Are you, like, you, you gotta be pulling my leg. Hmm. Delusion takes many forms, I guess. Alex shrugs, however. It didn't take long for me to realize that my lieutenant was about to lose his patience, so I volunteered to resolve the problem. Ooh. Without any other ideas, I did what any reasonable man would do in that situation. I got down off my horse, knelt in front of a madman, and swore my fealty to both Julius Caesar and the em Roman Empire. Of em the Imperator. Oh-ho! A strange older man. Old man was quite uh, was quite elated by this display, and I asked his permission to continue our duty as safeguarding the citizens of his empire. He gave his imperial assent and promoted me to the rank of centurion on the spot. Of course, I informed my superiors of this development, but they were quite insistent that promotions from wandering madmen don't count. Ah, uh, c'est la vie, I suppose. Alex chuckles, shaking his head at the memory. It's then that you nearly run into Madame Gazelle, which is especially surprising given how easily she stands out. Oh, bonjour, 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 Yvette. It's delightful to see you. Her eyes flicker between yourself and Alex, and you can see that she's assessing something. I'll warn you now that I might be a little rushed, as I'm actually here on business. Apparently one of my former husband's uh, investments was in a small fleet, of fishing boats, I'm only just realized. I've only just realized this because the owner hasn't sent me an, an update ever, which I'm learning is a reason for concern. Given the desire, the dire situation concerning food, he should be making a fine profit every single day. So I can't imagine a positive reason for any secrecy on his part. As you can tell, he's been acting in a rather undisciplined fashion, and that's something I simply cannot allow. Huh. I, I am not certain it's all that sinister. It could simply be a misunderstanding. Alex suggests with a sigh. <sighs> Anrod glances at Alex's uniform and frowns. Uh, pardon me, but I don't need you to explain my business to me, nor did I ask for your advice. 
glancing between the two of you, two of them, you get a sense that there's some kind of underlying tension here. Perhaps something of a political nature between where the respective loyalties of the bourgeoisie and the military lie? Oh, I suppose I must depart, Honorad sighs, pointing towards the water. This errant fishing captain isn't going to mercilessly berate, him, berate himself, so the task has fallen to me. I see. I'm destined for the opposite direction, Alex replies. I still haven't cleaned all of my kit, and there's likely to be an inspection tomorrow. Both of them glance at you, and there's an obvious tension in the air. Can't you stay, uh, both stay for here uh, just a touch longer? You have more in common than you might think. Huh. Hmm, Madame Gazelle and I have a lot in common. You really think that? The two of them pause to examine each other again. Oh, I just think the two of you would enjoy each other's company if you tried. Do it for me. Well, our first impression was quite a pleasant one, so perhaps you're right. You focus your efforts on making certain that the two of them simply enjoy each other's company. The situation doesn't allow for enough time to do anything of much substance, but it's good when people uh, you like get along. As it happens, it appears that Alex and Madame Gazelle have quite a bit in common when it comes to cuisine. The two of them have extremely adventurous palates, and they both spend the time giving each other increasingly obscure recommendations for taverns and, ca and chefs across the city. You have gained some favor with both Alex and Madame Gazelle. Well, thank you, 100 credibility. Your additional time with them soon comes to an end, and you part ways with them both. Heading home, you safely conclude that things went quite well. They did indeed. I'll take that. Improve our favor with both of them at once. Oh, Alex is inviting us out now. On the 12th. Ooh, dude. Dude. It's right before the my next uh, thing. Now, sorry, my man. So now we just improve. Oh. Mmm. That's gonna be right after it. Okay. I'm gonna be tired. Hopefully she doesn't take it, hold it against me too much. I don't want to be tired going into the party, but afterwards, I mean, if she doesn't like it too much, that's a shame. Now we do have some gossip, right? It's still fresh. It should be fresh for at least another day. Uh, so, what do we have to do? Turn around. Oh, Honorad and Ludovico. Uh, honor with Ludovico. Ludovico. Wow, it's like Ludovico, Ludovico all over. So are those, I guess those are the three, our three main, um, main, uh, love interests. Although there's that, that, uh, painter, too, that we still haven't met up with. Hmm. Okay, so what do we, what do we got coming up? We've got, uh, bills. Hmm. Yeah, there's no, there's no rumors at any of these places. There's just other things we can do. Well, we could go to the, to the uh, La Place Royale and get some more stuff. We could also research Armand. We can still do this thing with Bene with um, Ludovico, the Benedictions. It seems to be a main. A main quest point. But I think I'm gonna go ahead and just grab some cheap gossip and then sell it tomorrow. And, um. Uh, oh. 
Only now your goal is slightly different. You're looking for the mysterious skilled master of letters that sent you that message earlier. He said that he was interested in helping you, but you've also been deceived before. You approach the statue of King Louis XIII at the center of the square in order to survey the area. Specifically, you're looking for someone that appears to be looking for someone else. After a few minutes, you hear someone me someone me meaningfully clear their throat behind you. <laughs> Henry Avran Lucas at your service, Madame Dicko, a man says to you. Hmm. I don't have much time for mystery man. Hmm. Please give me a chance to make my offer, madame. To get to the point, I know that you've been getting involved with major players in the city, as it were. I can see why, too. Oh. After those riots, tensions have only arisen, and if I were a betting man, I'd say that things in Paris are going to get worse before they get better. Hmm. With that in mind, I wanted to offer my services as a forger of letters. A canny woman like yourself could obviously get quite some use out of a few political notes accidentally leaked to the right people in the right positions of power. While I can't directly influence the crown or the revolution, I'm certain that I would be able to deliver a significant push to the loyalties of the, cra the military, church, or bourgeoisie. Interesting. I can do my own lying. Well, then, you certainly have my attention for the moment. Do go on. <laughs> Wonderful! I can report to my, to my officers at any time, and we'll discuss the terms there. He says, then hands you a business card, which only has an address on it. No name or other indication of what the business does. The Master of Letters is now available to visit in the Paris map. This would all cost around 50 livres. Uh... I know this isn't cheap, but surely it's a paltry fee compared to the possibility of changing the course of history. Now I must take my leave, he says with a curt nod. Please consider my offer carefully. He walks away, disappearing into the crowd, and you are left to stroll around the La Place Royale. Hopefully, you'll be able to find some juicy gossip. Staying on the absolute edge of conversations, you stroll around the square, but I may be a traveler just admiring the apartments and gardens. As unfortunately, this flavor text is... I've already read it all before. After an hour or so, you find something useful. Pierre should be very interested. Cheap military gossip. The socialites in the square start to filter out to their dinner appointments and other social commitments, and you decide to head home as well. Okay. The Master of Letters. You look up at the sound of Camille knocking on your doorframe. Good morning, madame! Hmm. The house's rent is due today, as are Maurice and I's wages. Yeah. Ah. Merci beaucoup, madame! Camille says with a curtsy as you hand her the money. Ouch. Camille leaves, the, leaves to deliver the money, and with that, business concluded, your day may continue. Now, I, yeah, I still can't talk to... Marcel, do I have to go back to... Do I, I wonder if I have to go back to... Because I can't... I thought I could maybe do it from here, but I can't. Maybe I have to go to the... Um, uh, La Petite Mogul. Okay, uh, what is our calendar? We've got... Today, we'll really in the next two days because we turned Alex down to get ready for that. Okay, let's go ahead and sell what we've got. Pierre's office is more dis disorderly than usual. Ah, madame, thank God you've arrived. I have been keenly checking the winds of public opinion and my finely honed journalistic senses tell me that our readership desperately cries out for stories concerning the bourgeoisie. However, I am at a loss for such information. If you can get me fresh gossip re relevant, relevant to, the, to that faction in the next nine days, I'll reward you with a slight reduction in peril in addition to your regular finder's fee. Do you feel up to this task? Yes, no problem. <laughs> ah, fantastic! Now, on to business. Yes.
Okay. Got most of our money back that we spent the other day. Uh, and we don't actually need to rest up. We're not, we're not becoming exhausted. We can run all over town, not get exhausted, eh? Master of Letters. It's going to cost 50. Potentially five pair. We spend the day at home thinking about what you should request the Master Forger from the map. Oh, pardon me. From the Master Forger's services are not cheap. Make sure you have money to pay for them. It only mentions Fatima. Hmm. I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check it out, though. See if I can get him to improve. No, I can't. Oh, I can sell stuff. Interesting. My, really, my provincial outfit is worth more than this robe. So I don't understand. Like, I'm paying him now. But I can't get him to improve my my stuff. That is not good. That is really not good at all. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know what to do about that. I like this. I wanted him to improve this one. Apparently, I should have just bought stuff instead of working on these things. I need something that the crown likes. Crown already likes that one, but I like, see, I can't, I can't improve it. I wanted to improve the novelty and stuff, but I have no idea what happened to my tailor. I paid him, but he didn't actually do anything. Uh, Viscountess Catherine Con Conradin? This is the 22nd of May. Wine tasting. Sure. Uh, over there. I'll take that. And there's like no other options for me to like do anything to these. Three. Oh, I have three. Well, that is a bit on the sucky side. Just a bit. I mean, I'm, he's, he's costing me 40 livar per week, and I can't actually use the services. <sighs> right, well, we've got one more day to do things before the party, so... This is all just favor. Oh! There is some possible gossip there. Let's do this. Chance of getting some peril, but... During one of your explorations of the city, you find yourself in a fountain square. Groups of people are clustered together, locked in the kind of deep yet carefree conversations that make you wonder what exactly these people do all day. You wonder to yourself if any of these idle malingers, malingerers, malingerers have jobs until you remember that you too share a similar ill-earned but decadent lifestyle. Still, you have mountains of extenuating circumstances that have brought you to this point. What are their excuses? Have they no shame? You break from your increasingly venomous internal accusations when you hear a familiar name mentioned by someone nearby. Uh, I take it you used to work for Pierre Arano as well? Huh. Ugh, yes. I used to sell gossip to that self-important drunk. 
After all, he used to be the only game in town. Frankly, I'm glad to be free of that slimy reason. You would, of course, rush to Pierre's defense if all these vile accusations weren't so true. Now I sell what I find to far more reputable clientele. Ah, anything juicy lately? The younger man leans in. I myself heard the most fascinating things about a certain general in the military. Hmm. The older man puts out his hand, one for, for the other one to stop. What are you, what are you doing? Only... Why exactly would I share anything I've learned with you? We are competitors in this business. His new compatriot chuckles. Are we? All we have to do is share our gossip between ourselves and sell it all to different newspapers on the same day. We each make twice the money. <laughs> oh, well, I suppose that does make sense. I did learn something shocking about a prominent lawyer today. Hmm. Bourgeoisie or the military? Ooh. Listen closer to them both. Gain a little bit of peril? Yes. Adopting your best, most vapid expression, you pretend to be utterly fascinated by some flowers blooming near them. The two of them pay you no mind as you, your approach and cro as you approach and crouch, crouch low. Listening to their exchange, the two of them continue to whisper back and forth, and your keen hearing man manages to deduce all of the relevant details. This will be valuable indeed. You've gained cheap military and cheap bourgeoisie gossip, and I believe Pierre um, would like bourgeoisie. <sighs> the second you've gotten everything you need, you put up your hood and start to slink away. You can feel one of them glaring suspiciously at your back, but neither of the fools can prove a thing. You've gained some peril. That's okay. But moments later, you were already free of them and heading home to jot down some valuable notes. A successful day, all in all. I'll take it. Yesterday, a whole company of soldiers from the Gardes Francaises, Francaises, whatever, marched to the Palais Royal to publicly announce that they would, under no circumstances, fire upon the people. This noble declaration raised equal parts celebration and alarm from, from the common people. After all, they'd only make such a statement if they'd already been ordered to fire upon the people, but had refu refused that order. Later that day, a group of soldiers from that very company approached the Estates General to publicly denounce their own commanding officer, the Duc de Châtelet, Ch as an enemy of the people. While their proclamations could be heard through the doors, they never got past the guards into the assembly room and were arrested. Really? News of this spread like wildfire, and soon a mob of angry citizens had gathered outside the prison where they were being held. This mob grew to be so large and enraged that the commander of the prison was forced to relent and release them instead of risking a bloodbath. The soldiers spent only a day in prison before they were released to riotous applause and celebration. The wave of public sentiment reached uh, such heights that the Duc de d'Orléans uh, even plans to throw the released prisoners a banquet to celebrate their heroism in the face of tyranny. Needless to say, this has made the military establishment look foolish indeed. It has also given many common soldiers cause to investigate their own loyalties. The military lost a little power and moved towards the revolution by a decent amount. Do, do, do you guys get the feeling at all that uh, it's kind of inevitable that we end up with a revolution on our hands. I was wondering if there's a way to like avoid it, you know? Anyway, I need to wear my crappy conservative grant gown, sadly. Because that's the only thing that the... I mean, I could wear this. It's just neutral. You know what? Maybe that would be a better idea than using this. I mean, I thought I was going to be able to use uh, Maurice to improve this, but it doesn't look like there's a way to... to reach him. Well, let's go ahead and use that one. It's just going to be neutral. 
Uh, not altered your credibility. Restfulness not altered your credibility. Some cheap revolution gossip. Huh. Here you go. <gasps> oh, so I guess I didn't really need to spend that. My credibility is already low, and I'm actually going to basically wipe that out by selling stuff to the to Pierre, so that was a bit of a waste of money, but that's okay. Oh, we get three turns this time. So, oh, all kinds of gossip, a little bit of peril, um, credibility, okay. Outrace, outrageous crown gossip. Okay. Shocking crown gossip. Man, we can get so much crown gossip, it's incredible. Concerning correspondence, you take some time to go over distant memories of the letters Armand used to send you while you were still in the village. In retrospect, some of those missives may have been more concerning than you thought. Really. This is potentially fairly dangerous. But there's a lot of good gossip in there, man. This one's the safest option, but there is potential for a lot of stuff. This one's basically an all or nothing. A composer of some considerable ability is able to get a chance to speak with the Chevalier de Saint Georges, but there appears to be quite the line. Perhaps you can help him with his problem. Well, let's give it a try. You enter a crowded room and nearly bump into a man who's dressed in far more somber colors than most of the gentlemen of this party. Oh. Ah, oh, my apologies, madame. Are you here to see the Chevalier de St. George as well? Uh, my name is Angelo, An Angelo Strasna. I'm a composer and mathematician, which is what makes me so excited to meet the man. <laughs> he is an accomplished composer, a well-regarded polymath, and even a master fencer. There's a really nothing the man can do. I, it's no wonder that Her Majesty refers to the man as her favorite American. Oh. His voice drops low and he gestures to the expensively dressed gentleman in the room. However, as you can imagine, there's a significant waiting period to speak with him. Nothing to so gush as an official list, but you know how people of rank are. These strutting peacocks are quite attached to their established pecking order. You glance around and Angelo certainly isn't wrong. You recognize a few guests in the area that come from extremely powerful lineages. Simply put, they're not people one can simply barge ahead of without dangerous consequences. I know that you hunt for gossip, and if you help me, I might have something for you. A hard credibility challenge. I mean, we have a hundred. Hmm, lots of peril. Yeah, let's give this a try. Uh, pardon me, messieurs, but my friend already has an appointment uh, with the Chevalier. Chevalier. Hmm. I'm sorry. Oh, you have a what? Asks a gentleman regarding you with suspicion. Ah. I know one thing for certain. It is nobody here is taking appointments. He continues, his voice enraged and imperious. You feel the eyes of many important and scandalized men staring at you. Oh! A hundred credibility isn't enough. Wow. A hundred credibility is not enough. Okay. Angelo's maintains a carefully neutral expression while the two of you slink away from the room somewhat quieter and less scornful. Ah, to the devil with him! Angelo's mumbles to himself. Now I'll never meet the Chevalier de St. George. I'm sorry, Madame de Caux, but I must come up with a new plan. With that, he leaves you to your own devices. Hopefully you can find some way to repair your reputation after that debacle. 
what what do you need to be able to pass a hard a hard difficulty challenge then? Ridiculous. All right, let's try this one. In the midst of your latest conversation, you feel the ethereal pull of a lead on gossip. You're absolutely certain that the woman you're speaking with knows something that Pierre would find valuable. Judging from the way she's speaking, it could possibly be rather shocking. Better yet, you know it has something to do with the crown. Ooh. Suddenly, just as she's about to finish, a gentleman loudly barges into the middle of the conversation. Ah, good afternoon, madames. Oh, ho. oh would you both be interested in joining me at the harpsichord? I have a grand new composition that I'm about to demonstrate. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? You're a musician? How intriguing. <laughs> You can feel her focus on your previous discussion slipping away. Yeah. Uh, before that, you must hear the end of my friend's story. It's simply delightful. Huh. My story? She asked, suddenly remembering where she was in her name. <sighs> Ah, uh, well, I imagine that would be proper. After you, madame, he sighs. <laughs> Magnifique! Now, where was I? She asks before delving into the details you'd been so he eager to hear. You've gained a piece of shocking crown gossip. With her story completed, you and your con conversation partner follow the musician to his harpsichord, and he begins to play for a crowd. All the while, he seems extremely pleased with himself, and keeps looking at you like he's won some sort of victory. Men are truly strange sometimes. With the songs completed, you leave them both behind and explore the rest of the party. Okay. Cheap crown gossip. Shocking crown gossip. And concerning stuff. Shocking revolution gossip and shocking crown gossip. Well, we have shocking crown gossip. Maybe we should get some shocking revolution gossip. You find yourself speaking again with Michael, the chemistry student. He seems to be quite taken with the woman in front of him, but something about her motives seem more unsavory than most. Sure. Invite, you find yourself chatting with Michael Pelletier, the promising chemist, as well as the noble woman who invited him to this particular soiree. Hmm. Ah, thank you again for bringing me here, Michael says to his host. I never thought I'd see the day when a noble woman took such interest in me. Uh-huh. Oh, this. Think nothing of it, Michael. Though a certain rumor has piqued my curiosity, I hear that you've uh, been traveling in the same circles as some prominent revolutionaries. Oh. Uh, Michael swallows nervously before continuing. Uh, do these... Rumors displease you, madame? Oh, quite the opposite, in fact. One imagines that if you if you were regularly in their presence, you would hear certain damaging things about their activities. Things that, if brought to light by the proper sources, would reveal the true danger of their cause. You would have me become a spy? No, no, spies skulk in the dark, my dear. You'll just repeat what you hear to me. Mm-hmm. Well, Michael, you've always wanted something exciting to do. This could be it. Huh. Oh, you truly think so? Hmm. No, I can't do this. Walking amongst them, pretending to be their friend, only to report their deepest secrets to someone else? My conscience would never allow such a thing. Damn it! We had all that credibility. Refusing to hear any further argument, he leaves the both of you. Mad. I don't know what that is. Mad. Uh, she hisses to herself. I can scarcely believe I wasted my time on this endeavor just to have it cast away so easily. Maybe I can still savage this? Without an acknowledge, even acknowledging you, the aristocrat leaves to trail behind Michael, pleading with him in Saint 
saccharin tones, which is a plan that will never work. What a horrible, horrible mess this party has been. Hard to determine which part of this is more infuriating, so you content yourself with exploring the rest of the party instead. And going home in a really, really crappy mood. Lost 42 credibility, gained 7 peril, lost 10 levar, and got uh, some cheap crayon gossip and some shocking crayon gossip. And on that note, I will see you guys tomorrow. Take care.